Hi everyone! Today we're going to make pool noodle rocket flingers, which is a great craft that brings together science and a whole lot of fun. Let's go! Foam pool noodle, serrated knife, box cutter, two to three rubber bands, thicker, like size number 64, bamboo skewer, tape, I recommend using colorful duct tape, scissors, paperboard, old cereal or cracker boxes work great, glue sticks, glue gun and glue, optional. Guys, today we're gonna build something really awesome. We are gonna make these pool noodle rocket flingers. Aren't they neat? So yeah. Cool. Fling them on your own. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. I'm going to show you how to make your pool noodle rocket flinger. First, start with a bit of pool noodle. A serrated bread knife works really well to cut these down. Next, you're going to create the fins. You can make a template for your kids. It might make it easier for them to create all of them. We just used some old cardboard from cereal boxes. They can trace the fin and then cut around it. If your little one needs help and has a hard time cutting, you can cut it for them. How many do we need? You need three fins. Are these supposed to be the same shape? Because they're Let's not see. exactly the same. It's okay if they're a little different. Good I job. Think the yellow one is different. So this is gonna give our rocket some but balance. So we need to decorate our fins, we decided to take some construction paper and glue it to the outside. Put glue on it and then flip it over and stick it down. Okay. And then cut it out. Oh, okay. Nice, I like the blue fin. Next, this is where you might need to help your kids as well. I don't trust my little ones with a box cutter. So you're gonna take a box cutter and you're simply gonna cut down the edge of the pool noodle and you are going to slide it into place. Just slide it in there. Does it need to I had to make Rachel's a little bit longer. Does it need to slide in? Oh, yeah, it should slide in pretty easily. Well, mine needs to be longer. Yours needs to be longer too. Do you think your rocket would fly if it didn't have these? Nope, no. Not very well, would it? If you want it to stay in place a little bit better, use some hot glue and glue down the edge of your fin on each side. Then slide it back into the pool noodle. And that'll just give it a little bit more longevity. All right, Benjamin, we're gonna add some hot glue just so they stay attached to your pool no noodle a little better. So when you fly it, it will go a little better. Yeah. When your kids create detailed crafts like this, they are learning so much. For instance, they are learning to follow directions in order. So how do you glue it? You just, just on the edges of the part that's going to go into your pool noodle. On each do, uh -huh, side? Just do one line. Uh-huh. One line down and then one on the other side. They are also learning how to strengthen their fine motor skills. This is so important as they go on to build other things in life or they learn to create using their hands. Just be careful with that hot glue gun. All right, now take your pool noodle and slide one of those into there. And you might have to wiggle it a little, little bit since it has glue on it. To create the power in your rocket, you're gonna need a bamboo skewer. And I told my kids to take their two fingers because that's about an inch and go down about that length on their pool noodle. And you're gonna take the bamboo skewer, go all the way through the pool noodle, and tell them to rotate it a little bit to make the hole a little bit bigger. Okay guys, now that your fins are in place, we are going to create the energy, the power behind your rocket. These so are we, so cool. They are so cool. I need everybody to grab a skewer, grab one of these bamboo skewers, and go down about an inch on your pool noodle and that's where you're gonna put a hole all the way through, straight through your pool noodle. Even like through that. the other side? Yep, through the other side. It's and kind of wiggle it around, make the hole just a little bit bigger for you to make it easier to put the rubber band through. And then you can bring it back out. And then, parents, this is where your kids might need some help. You're gonna take a rubber band, and on the not pointy side of your bamboo skewer, you're gonna attach the rubber band, and the goal is for you to slide this through the pool noodle all the way to the other side. 
It's a little tough to get that rubber band to stay on the skewer, but once you do, you can slide that skewer out like that, and you should have something like that. Okay, now do. Okay, now take a rubber band and kind of thread it onto your skewer like this. And you don't have to go far down. Yep, just a little bit down so you can hold it tightly. It won't stay on. Yeah, that's why the closer you hold to the tip, the better. There you go, like that. This is simply to thread it through your rocket. I have to say, I was very impressed by this craft. It was a lot of fun to make. It was probably a very detailed craft, so if you have younger children, I would definitely recommend that you be there helping them all along the way. Once you have that on there, you're gonna take it, you watching? You're gonna slide it through the hole, the hole to the other side. And you're gonna wanna try to keep it onto it your skewer. Up. When I poke through, it falls off. Okay, I'll help you. When you finally do get it through, you can just pull the skewer out and then your rubber band's through it. Then you're gonna take another rubber band and holding this the first rubber band to make sure that it doesn't slide back out, you're gonna take your finger and pull the middle of the rubber band. All right, let me show you how to do it. And then if you need help, I will help you because this is a little bit tricky. You don't want this to fall through, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this with one hand, then I'm gonna pull this out from the middle, and I'm gonna get my rubber band underneath there. Next, you're gonna take your second rubber band, slide it underneath, and then put it on like a luggage tag, like so. And you guys, you've seen luggage tags. Remember how the luggage tags went on? You're gonna take your rubber band. Did you get it? I guess. You're gonna pull it through like a luggage tag so it stays on. Once that's in place, you're almost done. You're gonna take the first rubber band and go around both sides of the pool noodle. And once that's firmly in place, you're almost ready to fly your rocket. Now, now take th that and go, through, and go it. through it. Yep, you did it. Good job. This craft gives you a great chance to talk to your kids about big science ideas. For instance, when they make their pool noodles and connect the rubber band, you can stretch that rubber band out and ask them, is that potential energy or actually energy in motion? And then once they let it go, it changes to kinetic energy. I'm gonna wrap one side around it's and wrap the other side around. We took some tape and you're gonna to wanna to cover the outside of that rubber band, just so it stays in place. You might wanna go around a couple times. You can help your child do this. My kids had fun doing the tape. I'm doing it now. Ugh. Double tape. Yeah, that's fine, you can do two. And then once the tape is in place, your power is ready and you're ready to fly. Three, two, one. I loved getting to see my kids actually fly the rocket flingers. Three, two, one. Woohoo! Good job, go get it! Thanks. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 We hope you and your family had a lot of fun making the pool noodle rocket flingers. Tips, tricks, comments, we'd love to hear them. Share them below. Thanks for watching. In this video, we're going to show you a really easy way to make Play Doh at home. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carolyn, and these are my friends Phoebe and Kira. When I was a kid, I spent hours making shapes and creatures and pretend foods out of Play-Doh. I loved the endless possibilities of a lump of fresh, squishy dough. <laughs> what I didn't realize was that those little mounds of dough were helping me develop my hand muscles and sparking my imagination. 
So now I love watching these guys have that same creative experience and knowing the great benefits they're getting while they play. In this video, we're gonna show you a really easy way to make Play-Doh at home. This is a great project to do with kids because not only will they learn by helping you with the cooking, but they also have fun playing with the finished product. The best place for this project is the kitchen because we'll need to cook our dough on the stove for several minutes. And plus, we might make a little mess. The tools that we'll need are a small saucepan, a wooden spoon, a plate, measuring cups, and measuring spoons. The ingredients that we'll need are flour, water, salt, vegetable oil, cream of tartar, and food coloring. And we'll also need some glitter because we're making our dough sparkly. Phoebe and Kira help me with the measuring, which is a great thing for them to learn. Okay, are you guys ready to add the ingredients? Yeah! Okay, first, one cup of flour. Phoebe? It's hard to come out. There you go. Good job. All right, second, we're gonna add one cup of water, and I'll do that. Okay, third, a quarter cup of salt. All right, Kira, good job. Now we'll add one tablespoon of vegetable oil, and I'll do that. It's very tiny. It is very tiny. One tablespoon, here we go. Then we add two teaspoons of cream of tartar. Do you each wanna add one teaspoon? Yeah. Okay. And with your finger, you wanna level that off? Yeah, good job. Now right into the pan, good job. So Kira, do you see what Phoebe did? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then level it off. Good job. Now it's time to add the food coloring. What color should we make our Play-Doh? Blue. Blue, sounds good. So let's add 10 drops of blue food coloring to the pan. I can add five and Kira can add five since five plus five is 10. Perfect, all right, let's count together. One, One two, three, four, five. five. Good job, okay. Now Phoebe, your turn. One. Two, three, four, five. Good job, guys. Now, with a wooden spoon, we stir everything together until it's mostly mixed up. Good job. Phoebe, do you wanna try? Yeah. Okay. Good job, Kira. Nice. It sounds bubbly. It does sound bubbly, doesn't it? Now we keep stirring until most of the lumps are gone. It already smells like Play-Doh. It does smell like Play-Doh. Once the mixture looks smooth, we put the pan on the stove over medium heat and continue stirring the mixture while it's heating. To be safe, I do the cooking part, but I make sure to show Phoebe and Kira what's happening in the pan as the mixture starts to change because it's a neat process to watch. After a couple of minutes, you'll start to see solid clumps forming in the pan. Continue to stir these clumps together until they form one giant doughy mass. It happens pretty quickly. Hey guys, come look at this. See, it's starting to look like dough. Once your dough looks like this, turn off the heat and take your pan over to the counter and dump the dough onto a plate. 
Now the dough is very warm, so I'm gonna let it cool for a few minutes until it's cool enough to handle. Now just knead the warm dough until it feels mixed up. Do you guys wanna try? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go for it. What does that feel like, Kira? It feels like sticky ice cream. Sticky ice cream, what do you think, Phoebe? I think it feels like melted ice cream. Like melted ice cream, yeah. Does it feel mixed up? Yeah. yeah. All right. And that's it. Let's add the glitter to make it sparkly. You got it. What color should we use? Pink. Pink? I like that idea. All right. So we just make a dent in the middle, like this. And then we add glitter. Like that. And then just knead it until it's spread throughout. See, wasn't that easy? I love being able to make any color we want. Me too. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> what does it feel like? It feels like squishy dough. Squishy dough. I like to go like this. I'm yeah. glad we went with the blue. The blue is a pretty color. It is a pretty color. With pink sparkles. I like to poke it. Poke, 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 poke. I'm gonna stick it. Yeah. I'm gonna try and make a snail. If you store your dough in a plastic baggie or airtight container, it will keep for several months. Help us and other Mother Goose Club families learn by showing us how you and your kids did this project. We love to hear from you. So hashtag pictures and videos with Mother Goose Club and type stories into the comment section below. And also, don't forget to subscribe to be the first to hear about new videos. Bye! Bye. And... Bye! Okay. <laughs> no! No! Cute. Other Mother Goose Club is kind of tongue twister. <laughs>
How about I will cut the pieces of tape for you, and then you can tape them on the tube. Okay. Emily, are you done with the white tape yet? Can I use it? Sure. One thing I love about crafting is that it's a great way to teach your kids how to take turns and work together. Look, Mom, I made a heart. Oh, wow. Oh, that's so cool. I made one for you too, Alex. Thank you so much. So are you guys all done? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to try them out? Sure. sure. Let's do it. <laughs> and there you have it. These shakers are pretty to look at and fun to play with. And when your kids use them as instruments, they learn about rhythm and patterns. <laughs> Try this craft at home and let us know how it goes with a photo or video tagged Mother Goose Club or leave comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for other crafts, tips, activities, and more. Bye! Let's do it again. <laughs> From there? Okay. Okay. <laughs>Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to our series on reading at home with your kids. Today we're gonna to be reading Rock and Roll Vibe. Spending a few minutes each day with your kids reading not only gets them reading ready, but also shows them they can have a good time doing it. All right, so Eep says it's nap time for Lachlan. So Eep says, hi, Lachlan, it's your nap time. That's not in the book, but that's just what's going on in real life. During this series, we're gonna give you tips and tricks to really bring reading to life for you and your kids. So come on, let's go. Today's book is an adaptation of the popular Mother Goose Club song, Rock and Roll Vibe. Now this one is especially fun because my kids are familiar with the song and the music video, and now they're gonna be familiar with the words in the book. Okay guys, so today we have Rock and Roll Vibe. Are you guys ready to read? Yeah! Yes, okay, so let's check it out. Um, before we get into it, how about this cover? It's cool, right? You know what color that is? Yeah, okay, you know what color that is? Make sure to let your kids touch the book. It gives them a sense of ownership over their learning experience. It's a great way to keep them engaged. Empower learners read more. Hi, I'm Eep. Join my friends and me as we do the robot, robot dance. dance. Oh, look, you have Eep. You see Eep? Yeah. You see Eep? What color is Eep? Blue. He's blue. Look, he lives in a neighborhood with some robots. That's Eep's brother because he doesn't have stripes. Fascinating, good attention to detail. <laughs> Kids love a chunky book that's full of color and surprises, and reading at home gives them a chance to play and discover books that they enjoy. Fill your house with books of all kinds and you'll be surprised at how quickly your kids will find books and characters and stories that they relate to and enjoy. Okay, Row Row Robot. Go, 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 go bot. Oh, nice, nice pickup. And there it looks like they're gonna do the robot dance. Rock and robot. Do the robot dance! Okay, I'm gonna go to the next page. Rock, rock, around the clock. Rock, rock, around, around the, the block. block. Rock and Robot is fun for the whole family. It introduces lots of repetition and new vocabulary. So, they're standing on top of the clock here, like around it, but look how they did the block. See the sidewalk, and then like right there, and there's like a park bench and trees, and they, they're walking and around the block. The block. And the grass. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the green is the grass. Rock and, and robot, robot pop, pop into the, the beat. beat. Rock and robot, robot bopping, bopping down, down, down the, the, street. the street. Rock and robot, stopping, stopping for, for a treat. treat. Wait, what kind of treats are these? Ice cream. Ice cream. Yo, what's your favorite color ice cream? I mean, that's your <laughs> color, but favorite flavor. <laughs> um, what do you like? Um, strawberry. I like the Jenny's water. What kind of ice cream do you like, man? Green. You like green ice cream, just whatever. As long as it's green, you're good to go. I guess that would be like mint chocolate chip. Well, it could be a couple of things. It could be yeah. pistachio too, I think. It 
could be green apple. Or avocado. Green apple ice cream. Avocado ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids love to get up and move, especially after reading time. They also love to be creative and put on a show. So we're gonna watch the Mother Goose Club music video for Rock and Robot, and with a little help from our friend Ivy, we're gonna learn a new dance. Hey, you guys, I have a surprise for you. Yay! Okay, so I made these crafts myself based on what you're seeing. What do you guys think we're gonna be doing today? Um, aliens or robots? Robots. We'll do aliens next time. <laughs> do you guys like these? Yeah! You actually can wear them and you can become robots beep, yourself. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> what do you think? Do I look like a robot? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Do you guys know what robots do? Can you move your body like a robot? Now what do we need? We're all dressed to be robots, now what? Music! Music, that's a really good idea. Hey, I know a robot dance. Do you guys want to learn it? Sure. You can also do a little freestyle too. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Okay, we're gonna learn this dance. We'll learn it bit by bit. First, we're all gonna start off off. We're in the off position. Everybody turn off, and then we're gonna we're gonna turn on all those robots all at once. And then you can freestyle like a robot. So do you have any, have some freestyle moves ready? Maybe you can do a little, a little, a little goofy. You can move your little feet like this. But when you hear rockin' robot, do the robot dance. Rockin' robot, robot. do the, the robot, robot dance. dance. Can you guys do that? Rockin', rockin'. robot, rockin'. do the robot dance. You wanna try it with us this time? That's okay. Sometimes robot, his, his robot's off for a little bit, but we'll, we'll, we'll turn it back on, right? And then when you hear, oh, we're gonna go left and right. So we're gonna walk how a robot would walk, right first. So we're gonna go, rockin', robot, jump into the beat. And then we're gonna turn this way, rockin', robot, hoppin' down the street. But we're always gonna come back to, rockin', Bye. robot. Do the robot dance. And then there's just gonna be a lot of times where I'm gonna go <coughs> freestyle, freestyle. Let's dance, dance. let's go. You're scaring me, you're, you're a <laughs> robot. It's, it's scaring me. Dancing helps develop muscle memory, which helps them remember the words to the song. All right, now that we've learned the dance, are you guys ready to try with music? Yeah! This it's is a really good song. This is my favorite song, Rock and Robot. Let me turn the music on. Power up. Freestyle, guys. Rockin' robot. To the robot dance. Ooh, you a robot. Rockin' robot. To the robot dance. To the right. Rockin' robot. Rockin' We love a good dance party here, and this gives us an opportunity to reward the learning with some fun. One of my favorite moments was watching how fully they invested and committed to the imaginary play of being robots. They had their costumes on and they were pushing each other's buttons and flipping switches and they were responding to the prompts. I thought that was really cool to see them interact that way. Bop, bop, Good job, everybody. <laughs> Robot hug. <laughs> we hope you and your family get to spend some time together reading and dancing. If you have any questions or suggestions, we'd love to hear about it in the comments. Thanks for watching. Down, boom. Power down, boom. Power down, boom.
Power down. <laughs> Let's count them. One, Two, three, four. Now let's color our sticks, okay? Hey, I'm Rachel Hockett, and I play the teddy bear on the Mother Goose Club. In real life, I'm a mom to two kids, Olivia and Briley. We love doing holiday crafts like this twinkling star. It's a super easy craft that's fun and educational for kids. In this video, I'd love to show you how to make one. Okay, for this craft, you will need craft sticks. You'll need some glue, you'll need some markers, some string if you want to hang it up, and you'll need some decorations. Now your decorations can be anything that'll glue nicely to the sticks. We've got some big sequins here we're going to use for ours. And you can get all of your craft supplies at your local craft store or online. Now be careful if you're using sequins or small decorations if you have young children, because my son tries to eat them, so watch out for that. Crafting is really fantastic for kids because when they're doing crafts, they're working their finger muscles. And those finger muscles prepare their little fingers to hold a pencil and write, which is a very important skill for when they go to school. Okay, we're ready to craft. Now, the first step is to pick your shape. You can glue four sticks together to make a starburst star, or you can glue five sticks together to make a five point star, or you can glue six sticks together to make a Star of David. I'm going to make a starburst, so I'll take four. Next, I'm going to color my sticks yellow, my favorite color. Now, younger kids might get tired after coloring for a few minutes, and that's totally okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. That is the charm of kids' artwork. You can help your child finish their craft if they ask you, or you can just let it be. Next, glue the craft sticks in the shape that you want. You can do this step for your kids if they're too little. Then, set it aside to dry for a good 10 minutes. Now, it's time to decorate. For younger kids, you may need to do the craft for them up to this point, so all they have to do is glue on a few decorations. Just squeeze drops of glue and add the decorations. Steps like this help to build your child's fine motor skills. Those are the muscle movements that help little fingers pinch, pull, poke, and sort. All done. Now let the decorations get good and dry. And here's a quick tip. While you're waiting for your glue to dry, you can boost your child's learning by asking questions and talking about the craft. Every bit of conversation you have with your child will help your child learn new words and practice talking. Some good crafty questions are, what color is this? Or, what shape is that? Or, how does the glue feel? And also, how many sequins are on that stick? Finally, if you want to hang your star, just glue a loop of string to the back. Now, take a look at how this craft went for me and my kids. Let's pick out four sticks, okay? So we're gonna make a star bus. One, two, two three, four. four! Good job! Now let's color our sticks, okay? What color do you want to color yours, Bradley? You want to color this? Good job! That's wonderful, and I love the color you're choosing. Oh, that's so beautiful! It kind of looks like the colors that are on an American flag. See? Red and blue. A star! Very good! Before you glue the sequin, baby, we're going to actually glue the sticks together. There you go. And then wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. One more drop of glue. Thank you. Good job. Thank you for sharing. Olivia? I love it! Can you find me a star shape sequin? Give me, give mommy a star. <gasps> oh my goodness! This is so good! This is so good! <laughs> <laughs> I want you to put all of it like... Like all, all the way across? Okay. okay. Like all the way across from here. So there, so there, so there, so there. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. 
My kids loved doing that craft, and I love knowing that they got a chance to work with their fingers, that they used their fine motor skills, and that we had a chance to talk. So, give our Twinkling Star craft a try and show me how it goes. <laughs> Let's take a look at some photos and videos from families who tried this craft. turned out so great. Thank you to all our families who sent in photos and videos. You can send yours on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. Want more starry action? Watch our other Twinkle videos and hit us up with questions or anything in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to be the first to know about our next video. All right, craft stars, start decorating and we'll see you soon. You may need to do the craft up to this. Next, you glue the sticks together. That's wonderful, and I love the color you're choosing. You can choose. It's a popsicle stick. No, we don't have any popsicles. It's a stick. It's the popsicle stick. Okay. <laughs> please. Those are the finger movements that help children learn to pull. Hey, 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 Riley. But is this blue? No. Yes, it is. Hair, poke their brother. Wait, Riley, are you uh, eating the sequins? Super. Riley, give it to mommy. Give it to mommy. Thank you. Okay. All right, now. <laughs> Dinosaurs have great big feet that stomp, stomp, stomp. Dinosaurs have great big teeth that chomp, chomp, chomp. Stomp, 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 and a chomp, chomp, chomp. Stomp, 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 and a chomp, chomp, chomp. Dinosaurs! Hi, I'm Liam, and I play Eat the Mouse on Mother Goose Club. The Mother Goose Club is all about music. So am I, especially drums. Drumming is good for kids in a lot of ways, and you don't even need real drums to do it. I'll show you how. This is my buddy and neighbor Keller. He comes over for jam sessions. We have a lot of ways to jam, don't we? Yeah. Can we do the one where we take turns? Sure. Tell him how we play. Liam drums the pattern and then I drum it. We do it faster and faster. Watch. Ready? I'm going to speed it up now. Crazy fast one. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Patterns are super important for math. Drumming is a great way for kids to practice patterns because it's so fun. Another drumming activity is keeping a beat. Keeping a beat helps with talking and listening. Kids can hear and understand the rhythm of speech better if they practice keeping a beat. I'll start with an easy one. It goes like this. Now you join in. Okay. There you go. Now keep it steady the whole time. I'm gonna play different things over it. Very good. <laughs> My favorite thing about drumming is that you don't even need real drums to do it. Pots, pans, food containers, anything can be a drum. You can use a spoon or a pencil as a drumstick, or even just use your hand. Plus, the more kinds of sounds kids hear, the more brain connections they make. Look how the bigger ones make deeper sounds and the smaller ones make higher sounds as we play. Watch. You can join in too.
Show Mothergoose Club fans your drum skills by posting photos and videos and hashtagging them Mother Goose Club. Rock and roll by subscribing and type the name of your favorite drummer in the comments below. One, two, three, four. Clickety clack, clickety clack. What's that coming down the track? A freight train. Freight train coming down the track. Chugga, chugga, chugga. Hi, my name is... <laughs> Tell them how we play. Liam, drum, Liam drums a pattern. <laughs> Tell them how we play. Liam drums... Another drumming activity. Another... Mm. I think I just... Drumming is a great way for kids to practice patterns if they... If they... I'm gonna... Wait, were you... Alright, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna start with the simple one, all right? And you keep all through. Or... <laughs> yeah, so let's look at the audience and let's... A freight train! Plus, the more kids hear different kinds of sound... Keep that line. Show Mother Goose Club fans your drumming skills by... Um, subs... And type your comment, type your... Name of your favorite drummer in the comments. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> rock and roll by subscribe. <laughs>show you how to make elephant toothpaste. This is a super fun activity and it's a great way to teach your kids about sequence or the order of things. Let's go! Empty plastic bottle, dry yeast, warm water, liquid dish soap, 3% hydrogen peroxide, measuring cups, measuring spoons, safety glasses, large tub or tray to catch the foam, liquid food coloring, different shaped bottles or glasses. Making elephant toothpaste is loads of fun. First, you're gonna take half a cup of hydrogen peroxide and put it in an empty container. You may wanna use a funnel. Next, you'll wanna add a few drops of dish soap into the container. Next, you'll want to add color to your elephant toothpaste. Or you can do stripes. We're going to try red and blue, see how it turns out. I'm going to put it right on the edge and drip it down the side. For your next step, you'll take one tablespoon of yeast and mix it with three tablespoons of warm water. You'll need to mix this for 30 seconds. I'm going to mix it. Do you want to count with me? One, two, three, four, five, 29, 30. Okay, put your safety goggles on, pour in your mixture, step back and see what happens. Okay. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. What's happening? Give me up. It's going up. Going up. Yeah. See the stripes? Uh, I see the stripes. I don't think it's gonna make it. It might. Whoa! Whoa! Looks like actually like toothpaste. It does. It looks like toothpaste burning out of the tube. It's coming out. That's so cool. And that's how you make elephant toothpaste. Today, me and the kids made elephant toothpaste. It went okay. It did not go just as expected. Nope. It's not even moving. Wait, maybe we should add dish soap. Hey guys, how about we shake it up? It'll barely go faster. Makes the reaction go a little faster, you think? Do you think we should maybe try a smaller bottle? And yeah. see if it will go up faster? How about this? Okay, let's try that one. The best trial that we had was when we put a smaller bottle with more ingredients. So we kind of upped the measurements and we took the container down a little bit smaller. Okay, we did our first step. Now what's next? Ren, what color should we use? Yellow. You think yellow? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll do a little yellow, we'll do a little bit of green. Does that work? Mm -hmm. Good job. Do we do our soap? Yep, we do. 
think we did so. Oh, it's going faster. faster. Oh my. There it Whoa. 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 Look at that. That's awesome. Besides being amazing to watch, this is a great way to talk to your kids about sequence or steps done in a certain order. Following a sequence is super helpful for young children because they love to know the steps and the way that things go, and they also are very comforted by routines. Okay, let's add the yeast to the warm water and let's see what happens. Mix it. I have to mix it very quickly. Put it in the cup. Mm -hmm. But there's more. This also shows your kids cause and effect. Cause and effect is when one thing happens and causes another thing to happen. Like when we poured the yeast in, it made the toothpaste bubble. There it goes. Whoa. Look at that. Whoa. Third time is the charm. That's so cool. Third time is a charm. Look at that, Ruth. Wow. Did you see your green? Oh, this looks so cool. Green. Look oh my oh, man. goodness. As a mom, it's kind of exciting when your kids learn and almost when they're challenged and pushed, when things don't go perfectly, that's an opportunity for you to kind of coach them through that and just help them to know that things don't always go exactly how you want and that they can learn from that and keep trying. Maybe a Can we touch more? it? We have gloves on. You can touch it right there. Maybe uh, see. I want to do it. I don't know if it'll feel like anything. It's just it bubbles. Feel... All right, let's not stop the reaction. <gasps> then. See how far it goes. Wow. It's really <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Your gloves a little. It's, it's hot. hot. Yeah. Yeah, that's because. Is it hot? Because the um, oh, it is warm. So that might be because of the warm water. Because like, Good whoa. job, Mallory. Good job, McQueen. Ren, high five. Way to go, Reese. Good, Good job, Ren. <laughs> Whoa. All right, toothpaste makers, you're ready. Don't forget to share your tips and tricks with us in the comments below and let us know how you did. Thanks for watching. Mother Goose Club Playhouse.